Welcome to Empowered Returns, a show that surfaces forward-thinking real estate advice that investors and developers need to help them invest smarter and build better. Welcome to another quick hit episode of Empowered Returns, where we talk to our team internally and dive a little deeper into the best advice that we share with clients. And today I'm here again with Jared Clement. Welcome, Jared. Hey, Mike. Thanks for having me. I know you're a busy guy running seven lease ups right now, so yep. and with a lot more in the pipeline. So thank you for taking a, squeezing a little bit of time in for this conversation. Yeah, for sure. I think we want to really dive into your uh, expertise and your knowledge about what residents respond to as it relates to amenities and sort of what's really important and what's maybe not so important what's you know what's flashy versus sure. necessary and yep. and how those can impact a leasing lease up process because you know we get lots of a cli- uh, lots of questions from clients we're always asking us hey what amenities do i need in my building right. and and certainly that you know the question is is um is 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 important to answer because amenities are a major factor in leasing and what residents are looking for these days but I think there's often, I think we've we've sort of discussed this, is often um, the most important amenities are often overlooked. Right. right. I think our response is almost borderline controversial <laughs> in terms of what we think the best amenities are. Um, what would you say are, are some of the most important and overlooked amenities? And I think, I think to be clear, we're specifically and really talking about mid-market, like 50 to 150 right. unit type properties. And although this applies to, to any type of property, but really specifically in the, in the mid-market, I think was, is, uh, they can be oftentimes... Uh, uh, overlooked. Right. I think it, it comes down to kind of convenience luxuries versus or com- convenience amenities versus luxury amenities mm-hmm. and what really resonates with renters. And I think in the initial phase of like a renter's life cycle, they're looking for cool amenities. Like I think it attracts them when you're mm-hmm. like on apartments.com or you're looking for your apartment and you see a rock wall, you're like, I got to go in there and check yep. out that rock wall. But I don't think after you've lived there for a year, you're ever going to talk about the rock wall again. You're probably going to be like, yeah, the smart lock technology that gets me in and out of my mm-hmm. unit is so efficient and I'm not going to move out because I don't have to carry keys ever in my pocket or something yeah. like that. So when we talk about amenity spaces, we kind of like to, you know, there are flashy amenity spaces that are going to get people in the door. But the convenience amenities, we think, make people renew, make people want to stay in the community and ultimately mm-hmm. kind of rave about the community. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I think I think it, it's about all about making a person's a resident's life easier, right? right? Than just giving them another opportunity to, to to you know whether it's a workout facility or whether it's a rooftop pool or whatever right, you know yeah. whatever some of these uh, flashy amenities might be. And of course, as you get to a bigger scale community, these things you know it's easier to do all sort of all of the above quote quote unquote. Sure, you, know, you still exactly. got to make some good choices and right choices. But I think what's most important is that we've where we try to focus clients on, hey, we got to get these convenience and, and amenities that make it easy for people to live here right first. And because oftentimes they're not that expensive. They just need to be planned out in advance and thought about how to do it. So right. I know you just mentioned things like smart locks. Those are, those are you know, making it easy for people to come and go from the building, from mm-hmm. their unit, um, getting, you know, packages and deliveries and, 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 and get letting guests in. So all that stuff is, is, is really important. Um, but also things like a, a really well thought out package room with right. maybe built in recycling right there. So yeah. you don't have to take a box up to your unit, open it up and then bring it down to the recycling. Right. I mean, right. You know, that's a, it's big a huge one for pain you. point yeah. for me. It's <laughs> like half of my life is carrying boxes up and down and breaking them up in the yeah. you know trash room. But I think putting like a, you know, a system together makes you a little bit more green. You're recycling more efficiently. You know, tenants can have the experience of a package opening section or whatever. I saw a statistic the other day for, it was like, if you have a gym in your building, 7% of people that have a gym in their building say they use it every day. Mm -hmm. So like, I know everybody has to come in and out of their unit every day. So like, I keep bringing up smart locks, but like you Mm -hmm. use your smart lock every day. You Mm -hmm. probably use the gym like once a week or something. Mm -hmm. And I think like that type of um, efficiency that a smart lock creates or, you know, like a package room creates or even, um, you know, like automated call up to your unit, it comes up on your phone type of amenity, stuff like that. Even that is, you know, improves the tenant's life at the building more so than I think the fancy rock wall does or the pool does because, I mean, especially in New England, how often are you going to use a pool? Mm. Right. And so, and, 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 you know, I know everyone, a lot of times in the sort of design development, the design phase, the design development phase, it's often like, oh, what, what, how can we make this, you know, bigger, bolder, splashier amenity. And yeah, again, that stuff does get people in the door. It is attractive. It's a nice sure. picture. It's a nice rendering. But I think when we think about 
actually creating the lifestyle that you want that sort of makes this thing a sustainable, sustaining, you know, building with good renewals, strong rents, right. low vacancy. It's more often the, the the lifestyle and convenience things that really drive the needle. And in fact, if you've got a good, you know, high quality leasing team that can really talk incoming residents through these things as well, you can sell those really effectively. So people actually see and understand and, and tend to tend to lease faster at these buildings when they're when they're, you know, essentially um, walk through a, a, right. a leasing process in a more effective way too. I think it's like not to like bad mouth flashy um, amenity spaces, but I think like those amenity spaces sell themselves. Uh, you know, on a tour, you don't necessarily need to point out the pool. It's there and like everyone's going to notice the pool. You're probably here because of the pool. But on a tour, you're going to make the resident experience like better and you're going to explain to them a part of the showing process is showing them the smaller amenities that on their day to day function are going to improve their life. Yeah. And these are the ones that, you know, a after three months, six months, nine months, when they're hitting the survey button to say, what do you like most about this place? Oh, I love the package room where I can just open my boxes there and, and shred my right. shred my paper right here, so I don't have a mess in my in my unit. Yeah. Or the I love the 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 convenience kiosk here where I can just grab snacks and go on the way out the door. Right. You know, I don't have to worry about running to the to the supermarket. I have this, or or you know, or a or I have there's a refrigerated package room, for instance, where I can get my groceries delivered easy. Yep. So these types of things that really are resonating with a lot of people. Um, that make that can make a really big difference um, a, a, in terms of the lifestyle and communities. Again, really that overall satisfaction in, the, in a community and a property that I, I think in the long run serves the property better. And it's cheaper to build, cheaper to operate. Right. And so, you know, again, I think these things are often overlooked in favor of the bigger amenities or they're not thought about enough in terms of how to do those well. And so oftentimes what you have is a sort of bastardized package room where you have a, you know, you, you don't have room for, for you know you maybe have a package automated package system which are mostly brutal by the way yes. instead of having a well thought out like how do people actually use these spaces and how do yep. we develop a lobby that makes sense and, and 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 so these are all things that are really important to think about not and not overlook and i guess that's our advice here is make sure these, there's some thought put into these spaces right. and not just the you know spectacular gorgeous you know gym or whatever it might be i feel like we're mostly trying to say how important the attention to detail is mm -hmm. Right. Like those small touch points and like quality indicators to renters do really resonate and do improve their, you know, experience at the property as they live there. Yeah. So like while the flashy amenities will probably get them there, I think what makes them stay is the convenience and efficiencies that some of these like smart products can bring. Yeah, totally. And, and, I, and I think the one other thing to, to mention is that oftentimes resonates with people just the overall kind of design aesthetic like design matters in a lot of cases to think about make sure you like you're investing in the interior design and giving people mm -hmm. like okay this uh building like it evokes a sort of emotional response when you walk in if they're just walking into kind of a you know blank wall type of space or a boring design it's it's not it just doesn't quite resonate as much and i think i would incorporate that you know design as an amenity almost as another one yeah, that is oftentimes definitely overlooked or maybe not overlooked but under invested in, in a lot sure. of cases it's like i immediately start to think of design and like closet spaces and how like that could be an amenity if done really well yeah. like a perk of being in this property could be that like i love the closet space yeah. and it just works well for all the stuff i have yeah totally and i know we've talked about this a little bit before but even yeah having you know having in unit amenities, you know, sort of low, lowercase right. a amenities like like design closet systems installed mm -hmm. that can really go a long way for a relatively small investment overall. But you know, when they're comparing that to another apartment, you know, it's like, oh my god, I don't, I, have to, I now I don't have to pay for a dresser or something. I have yeah. all my stuff organized, ready to go. It just makes my life a lot easier, and that matters a lot to residents these days. Definitely, yeah, definitely mm -hmm. does. So anyway, I guess our major takeaway today is as we kind of wind this down is attention to detail on some of those less, quote unquote, less important amenities is 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 actually important to think about. Make sure you're designing them well, planning them well. What is the usefulness, the convenience of the residence? Right. Uh, and spend just as much, you know, or almost as much or just as much time and, and, and money thinking about those as you are with the big flashy amenities, whether it's a pool or a big gym or a rock wall or whatever else it might be out there that that is like, you know, the the amenity du jour right. uh, of the yes. day. This hit, hit, hit the basics um, is such a key part of, of planning a, a well-functioning building and community that's going to also absorb and lease up well. Yeah, definitely. Cool. Well, Jared, good chat. Another good quick hit on Empowered Returns, and hopefully uh, I'm sure I'll see you again in the near future. Yeah. 
And uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully the audience got something to take away here today. Yeah, cool. Thanks, Mike. See Appreciate you. it. Thanks, Jared. See you on the next episode. Yep. Thank you for listening to another quick hit episode of Empowered Returns. If you're a forward-thinking real estate investor or developer looking for actionable advice that will help you generate market-beating returns, make sure to subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcast fix. I'm Mike DeMella with Charles Gate, and I'd love to connect on LinkedIn and further the conversation for any specific questions you may have. Thank you for listening.